Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Mischief Maker TV. You are not going to want to miss this episode. On today's episode, it is time to tear down and reassemble the Fusion Dana 80. So, the hair has gone up. It is a little toasty today. But if you guys have watched the last episode, you'll know that I said that Mischief Maker was down. Now, when I say down, I mean his front locker isn't working, so we're going to figure that out. But I was having the worst screeching sound from the passenger rear. So, last night, I decided to take the wheel and tire off and took those bolts off took the brake caliper off and this is what I found. That is right, so the dust shield is actually bent a little forward. You can see where it's kind of been scraping against the rotor. Ooh, check the little rotor out. All right, so we know that the squeaking was coming from the dust shield, obviously that was bent in on the rotor. Thank goodness, I really thought it was something a little more serious and this absolutely happened at Four Dice. I now recall coming out of the trail and hearing something like this and just thinking, it's a Jeep sound, I'm not even gonna bother. We're probably wheeling tomorrow, so I'm just gonna ignore it. So I'm glad it was just that, but all we need to do is quickly bend that back. Now that happened because um, I now have a different uh, back space with uh, my wheels and tires now. So um, I think just what happened is a rock got up in there and probably bent it forward. Something I have not had to think about before, but definitely going to keep that in mind from now on. So all I have is a presser wrench here. This is all I'm gonna use. I'm actually gonna put it up to the point where it's bent from. If you go a little further down and you bend back, you're essentially just gonna bend that one part back. So I wanna go from like the crease, as I would call it, and bend back from there. All right, we're almost there. Over slightly. be an easy fix and we should be able to get everything back on again okay so as promised I am going to kind of start the process from the beginning on the driver's side just so that I can talk you through how to do it how simple it is and uh, what you need so I have my tools my small Milwaukee um, impact there I have the larger one I have all the sockets that I need. So I'm going to need a 19 to take my wheels off. I'm going to need the 12.11 millimeter for the bolts. Um, I'll show you that when we get there. I'm going to need the 21 to get the brake caliper off. Let's get to work in. We have one more. You can use an extension. Um, I can actually manage to get these off without one, so. All right, there we have it, done. I just time to take the wheel and tire off. So normally I would have the Jeep on jack stands to be super safe, but I don't have any at the moment. I have a feeling I left them in a friend's garage. So we are on just jacks at the moment. We've made sure it's safe enough, but you just have to be careful. But uh, now we're just gonna take the brake caliper off. So I'm gonna switch over to my 21 sockets. I have a longer one, I have a shorter one. 
and I have an extension because I'm gonna have to come in from the back side to get them off. So that is the caliper off. What you're gonna do next is you're gonna make sure you have bungee cord and you're just gonna bungee that caliper out of the way so you're able to work. All right, the next thing you're gonna need is an impact and an 11 millimeter 12 point to take these bolts off right here. Now, make sure you have a drip pan underneath. Gear oil is gonna come out of there. Um, I may or may not have to pry it open a little bit, but we'll see. So. I have my trusty pen, pen pen, just pop that underneath. Awesome. And uh, we just zip these off. And now we're just going to take the axle shaft out of here. Okay, so now we have come to the e-brake. Now you have to take this off first before you can actually take the hub apart. So this is really simple. Okay, so you can see the spring here. You have a clip over here, you have a clip over here. So just to get these clips out, what I do is I take a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, something just to tap it with. Just right now I have, this is what I have. So I'm just gonna go in here like this. one done. safe. I have a paper towel with everything here. And then you should be able just to poke the pins through the back. Uh, we go. Pin number one. And I'll just poke this one through the back too. Now it's time to get the spring out. Now the spring at the bottom, there are two of, you can see there, one, two on either side. They're really difficult to get out. So we prefer to try and get this little one out right here. I just use needle nose and uh, kind of fight with it a little bit. Oh, 
Just wiggle it around, it'll come eventually. First one off, we did. All right, so let's just grab this. Now this is undone. I'm gonna pull this apart. Out comes this bolt right here. Pop that in our little pile. And then Normally, I just put a hole in my glove and um, kind of wrestle with it just a little bit. There we go. There we go. Here you have it, right there. Look at that. Beautiful. Now we're going to need to keep these, need to keep this. The springs, we'll keep them right there, but these are looking a little on the thin side. As you guys can see there. So we have that off, which is gonna take us to our next step, which is taking the actual hub off. What you're gonna need for this is a spindle nut socket. I'm gonna show you the one that you guys are gonna need for this axle. And here it is, right here. Check that out. I'm gonna have all the parts that you're gonna need. Um, also, at the beginning of the video, I kind of showed you very quickly what you're going to need to do this tool-wise, but I'll also have all of these in the description below, um, just so you don't have to go back onto the video a million times if you don't want to. All the information will be there. But this is what you're gonna need next. So all you do now is take your spindle nut socket, Pop it in the holes here. Now there are four little holes here that this fits into. That is a normal sound. It's a normal sound, it's a normal feel. You're gonna feel like you've broken it. No, you haven't, not at all. Let's just make this way around. Loosen it up just a little more. Should be in there. There we go. Check that out. Pretty cool. So we're just gonna put this down on our paper towel with everything else. We'll clean all of that up. And uh, we're gonna get our picks. We're gonna take our bearing out. Awesome. Let me check this bearing out. Let's take a look at this. It's actually looking really good. There's no scarring or pitting inside. It's smooth, looks good. They all move great. No problems here. This is really nice. We'll set this aside to clean this up also. Now we should be able to just pull this off. Now, remember there's a seal in the back and there's also a bearing at the back. So. Look at all that gear oil just coming in. Awesome. I'm going to set this down. Let it run out a little. Now the seals tend to break themselves in two. So you can see right here that the seal is still attached there. So we're gonna get that off right now. Oh, 
awesome. So this is one part of the seal that's come off. The other one is still on here, right here. So as I said, we're gonna go get it in a vise, take these out, take them back over here, and um, we'll get those new seals put in and we'll put everything back together again. Alright, this is it. It is time to put everything back together. Now, you just saw us clamp that hub onto a work table and pry that seal out. Now, we checked everything. I checked the races. You want to check just in case there's any scarring or pitting. If there is, you definitely want to change those races and bearings out. Luckily enough, Mine look okay. So I actually taped the hub up and painted it black. Yes, no one is going to see it. Yes, Walter is the one who suggested doing it. And do you know what? He's kind of right. When you break everything down, it's nice just to make sure that your stuff is good and nice and clean. So we gave it a little, a little sprucing up with paint, if you will. And as you can see, the race we already checked. It looks really good. We obviously had to get another seal. Now I am going to leave all of this information in the description below for you guys so that you know what you need to get. But we were lucky enough to get a seal. All we're going to do is we're just going to quickly clean this up again. Uh, make sure that it's nice and clean and ready for all of the bearings to go back in here. So you're going to pop your seal in this way with the flat surface facing up. Now, what do we use to put this in? It's a bearing race set. Looks something like this. So normally if you're going to drive, um, say, uh, a race in, you would actually put it in the other way and that just puts it in evenly. We're going to put it the other way so that the flat surface will go on the seal like this. We're just gonna quickly clean this up. We're gonna take our bearings, we're gonna pop them in there, make sure they're nice and clean, which they are. There's nothing on there that you can see. When I talk about scarring and pitting, by the way, you'll see like scratches basically, or you'll see what look like little dimples, little dots everywhere. Well, we don't have any of those, which is awesome. And the spindle looks like it was just put on yesterday. So I'm really happy that everything's looking super awesome in the rear and uh, we don't have to change anything out. We're just checking up on everything, if you will. So we're just gonna pop that race in. And now we're gonna take the seal again, the air side up, the flat side up. I'm just gonna place it right here. And I'm gonna start to slowly just work it down. So here we go. So you can just see those grooves right there. So, you know, we're showing three here, a little more four here. So it really does make it easy to try and get that in nice and even. But there we go. There we have it. Your seal is in. I actually just put a bag. It's good to keep a bag over the tube because there's still obviously some oil coming out there. What you're going to want to do is just the gear oil from the pan, just pop a little very, well this is what I like to do anyway, just a thin layer right there and we're going to do a thin layer just inside the seal. There we go. Okay, we're just going to have to wiggle it a little bit. Now it's not going to go all the way back to where it began. Here you actually do need 
the nut to help just seat that back in there. Okay, so we're gonna get our outer bearing right here. We are gonna pop this in. You're gonna have to lift the hub a little bit to get that on. Now you're gonna get socket that you took it off with and you're gonna torque it down to around between 75 and 80 foot pounds. Okay, so there is a little groove right here. It's like a key system. And there's a little groove right in here. Well, that, that will fit into there. Perfect. We're gonna get our spindle nut socket. I like to start it by hand first. It's just a personal preference. So I'm actually gonna do 75. Um, and then we're gonna see how freely this moves. And then we're gonna back it off a little. It should be quite stiff when you first do it. And then you gotta back it off just a little. And it's all about the feel. So <laughs> fingers crossed, I hope I'm good at feeling it out. Coming up, there we go. Look how <laughs> this is very tight very tight indeed. The reason why you don't want it too tight or too loose is that the bearings are going to get hot on the spindle and then you're going to need to do all of this again and replace everything. So again it's like a feel thing. I only know from the front it's a little different but I'm hoping, fingers crossed, I got the feel but to me this is a, a little a little too tough. I'm just gonna take that back a little. That feels better. Okay, so now we have the hub on there. We have to move on to the delightful challenge of putting the e-brake back on. And we're gonna switch out those shoes. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, these parts right here, which is your e-brake, are called shoes. So we have brand new ones. The tops are gonna be these parts right here. This one and this one. This is essentially gonna go into the piece that is actually already on the Jeep. This is what I'm talking about. This piece right here. So actually on the other side of the Jeep, on the passenger side, this is up top. It's quite a challenge to get this assembled and on. All right, let's see if we can do this. Just taking a moment. Please let us do this in a timely fashion. Not three hours, not three hours. Ready to go. That's what it's supposed to look like. You see the little notched out parts? They actually fit in to this down here. So let's see if we can get one side started. All right, the last cut was me struggling with <laughs> the last clip. But then 
I went and got needle nose vice grips. These are actually the lifesaver of this whole job. All you need for your e-brake to get the clips on, to get the springs in, is this. But let me just quickly walk you through how I put this on. Okay, so we can see it is on, it looks beautiful, and this is kind of the way that I do it. So this spring right here, which is one big spring, I hook these into the shoes first so that they're on. Then what I do is I come up here, I put the pin in, and then I put the clip on, just so it holds the shoe in place. I do the same with the other side. I then take the adjuster and pop that in there, put this side of the spring on, and then put this on right here. Now that all seems so simple and actually now I know the process of doing it, it's not going to take me two days to do. I couldn't understand why the shoes were sitting in such a weird position and kept springing forward which is why I couldn't get the spring in. Walter actually came out with fresh eyes and asked me why the sensor wasn't flush with sort of the back of the hub. So I came to the conclusion that actually I had not seated the hub in all the way. So all I did is I took my good old nut socket right here and tightened it down. And of course, it's seated further back, it sat where it's supposed to, and everything fit on A-OK. -okay. Now, the great thing, people, about putting Jeep parts together is that there's a specific way to put it on, and if it's on, everything else will fit. If it's not on and you're having trouble with other things fitting on there, it's probably because the step before isn't done right. It's a very big learning curve. All right guys, just before we start putting everything back together again, I do want to remind you, I am going to be showing you every single tool that you're going to need to break this down. It's going to shave a lot of time off um, if you just grab exactly what I show and uh, I will have that for you. But for now, let's get back to work. So because these are new rotors and obviously new shoes, um, they're going to take a little getting on, which is fine. So now we're going to put those lug knots on. Now we're just gonna zip those in. See how that moved a little bit right there? Everyone has their own way of doing everything. This is just mine. Quick reminder, I'm not a mechanic. For a lot of people out there who have a lot of comments, um, you know, people who've been doing this for years, people who've been doing this since they were a kid, people who are mechanics and I just want to reiterate, I really am not one. I learn everything I do off YouTube, basically, and um, I just want to be able to take care of my own stuff. So this is the way I do stuff. So to get the rotor on, I start with a flathead screwdriver, and then I put the lug nuts on, and I just zip them in. You can see the rotor move back slowly. This is just something I like to do. So 
so remember you're gonna hit a certain point where you just need to tip it back <laughs> tip it back and push it forward same again i have a gasket right here like this this is called a gasket and uh, you don't need one of these i prefer to have these so i don't need to rtv the whole thing and get really gooey but you just want to make sure that you clean everything up first you want to take brake cleaner you want to clean that drive shaft before you pop it in there gasket in between the two that stops it from leaking forgot to mention that this one's being a wee bit of a monkey today there we go. Now we're just ready to put our bolts back in here. Now I have 12.11 millimeter bolts that go in here and obviously you're gonna need the same socket to pop those in. So I'm actually just gonna take my bolts, give them a little clean. They've been set in gear oil from when I took the whole thing off. Uh, so we're gonna give them a clean up and get them in. Okay, so just before we put the wheel and tire on, I had a thought. Actually, it was definitely not me. It was definitely Walter had a thought. So you saw that we painted the hubs. We're trying to just kind of refresh everything for the next year and uh, decided to put a lick of paint on it. Thought, I mm, don't know how this is gonna work. I don't wanna tape everything off. Please don't make me tape everything off. Um, so we're gonna take the old rotor. We're gonna take a lug nut. We're gonna put the old rotor on backwards onto the new one and see if we can work with that. Yeesh. Ha ha. So I don't know if anyone has used that technique before, but it has definitely worked. Take a look at this. Right, this is, I've come looking pretty swanky. Okay, so what is left to do? All we have to do is put the brake caliper back on first before we hit that wheel and tire. Now for the brake caliper, two bolts. This is them right here. Uh, this is a size 21 socket. I'm gonna be using this. I'm also gonna be using the impact with an extension and we're gonna use 21 millimeter sockets for that. Now with the bolts, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you just put a little tiny bit of red Loctite on there. So again, you're gonna see everything that you need, but this is what we're gonna do. All right, so the brake caliper time. I did double check my brake pads in there to make sure they looked okay. They look fantastic. I do have new ones that I could put on, but honestly, they look great. And I actually changed them out not long ago. So let's get these on. You may have to prise these apart if that happens. I do use a C-clamp to do that, um, just to get it back on here. It's ideal if you do it before and not after, but this looks pretty good. I'm gonna take these out. Okay, and line this up. Okay, so the last thing we have to do is get the wheel and tire back on. Obviously, you need your wheel and tire, you need your lug nuts, which mine, again, go on with a 19 millimeter. And for those of you with big tires, I call this the Rose method. Yes, Jeremy Rose actually taught me how to put a massive tire on myself to get it on and off safely. So all we're gonna do is put this on the ground right underneath in the middle where the tire is gonna go. We're gonna set that tire on it. Then we're gonna lift it from here. It should just slide into position right here. So let's 
get this last step done, shall we? So you want to get the tire as close as you can to that wheel. You might have to come at it at an angle. We're just gonna keep putting these little nuts on by hand. Now the reason you want to do it by hand is so that you don't strip them. guys there you have it a breakdown of my fusion axle from beginning to end so two pieces of advice i would give to anyone are you ready for this one have patience especially if you're doing something new it is going to get frustrating it just is i don't care who you are i don't care if you're superman superwoman you're gonna get a tad wee bit frustrated Walk away, take five minutes, go back to it. Don't work on your vehicle when you're frustrated because you're gonna make mistakes. I made two or three whilst doing this and it's fine, that's how you learn. No one is perfect. The second piece of really important advice is have the correct tools. If you have the correct tools for each stage, it is gonna make your life a gajillion times easier and it's going to make the process much quicker. So talking about tools, let's head on over and see what you need for this job. Okay, so first of all you're going to need jacks and jack stands. Yes, we didn't have jack stands but the guys here made sure it was very safe for me and we did have two jacks. So start with that. Wheels and tires. Uh, obviously you're gonna have your own size socket to get that off. Again, some of you might have your own key for it. I use a 19 millimeter with an impact. Sometimes I use an extension there. And to get those big tires off, if you don't have all that muscle, use a crowbar underneath the tire, lift it up to get it on and off. So next you're gonna take that brake caliper off. And these are the tools that you're gonna need. I use an impact sometimes with an extension and actually go through the bump stop to get that top bolt off. But you can also use a ratchet as well. As you can see, I have the tall and the short 21 millimeter there. You're gonna need a bungee cord to uh, put that to the frame of the Jeep so that that weight doesn't go on your brake line. Very, very important. You guys can also see, I have a C-clamp here. When you put your brake caliper back on, you may need your C-clamp just to seat it back in so that it fits onto the rotor. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. You can do it at the beginning, you can do it when you put it back on. It's completely your choice. So next, you are gonna take that rotor off. It is gonna be tight, so don't be alarmed. 
You might need to help it on a little bit with a little mallet tapping on the back just to move that forward. And then we're gonna move on to taking our axle shaft out. Now for this, you're gonna need an impact and you're gonna need an 11 point socket for that. Zoop, zoop, zoop them out, should come out. Um, and make sure, people, you have that all important drip pen. I don't have one to show you. Um, I actually just went to Walmart and bought a baking tray. Perfect, everything goes in there. Yuck, yuck, trash, gear oil, fold, garbage. The next thing you're gonna move on to, the e-brakes. They're actually not that terrible when you have the right tools and you know what you're doing. Your glasses, light spring, you might lose an eye, but in the end, it works. We've taken them out, it's awesome. And these are the only tools that you need. Now to pry it off, a lot of people do use um, a crowbar or something like that. You can just do it with your hands, it's okay. Just make sure you don't trap your fingers in there. But other than that, that's all you need for that. These are the last set of tools you guys are gonna need, and that is to take the hub on and off. Now you're gonna start with the spindle nut socket. It is a special one. Make sure that you get this one. It inserts in the middle, there are four little slots that it must go into, and you're gonna need a or torque wrench for that. Stick with the torque wrench because you're gonna need it to put it back on and you wanna put it to between 75 and 80 foot pounds when you put it on. As you saw, it sounded terrible. Just back it off 90 degrees and it's all about the feel. You don't want it too loose, you don't want it too tight, you don't wanna burn those bearings out. And obviously you're gonna need a pick to get that bearing out the front. Be very gentle with it. It's a delicate little flower. I'm just joking, you're fine. But you'll need a pick to get that out. And then you're going to need that crowbar to leverage to get the back of that hub off because the seal does break itself in two. So you're gonna have the remnants of the back of the seal still on the spindle. So that's all you need for that. And then as you saw in the video, you're gonna want to inspect those races and bearings. Now, if they're bad, just go get new ones. Fortunately, I don't have any new ones here to show you. Um, you're absolutely going to have to get seals. Because they break into you, you have no choice. You have to get them. Now to get those seals back in, you're gonna need a bearing race kit. Love this thing, love using it. Now, when you're putting that hub back together, remember you can grease them a little bit, again, it's just a personal preference. I like the gear oil to get through the tubes and get in there and do its thing. Also, this is not a daily driver, obviously. If you do have more of a daily driver, I would suggest putting that grease on just so that you don't hurt anything when you're on the road. But guys, that is it. That's all you need. That is the process. I hope you guys have found this pretty interesting. You find it helpful and hopefully it'll make some of you just want to tear your rear apart and just take a look at it anyway. But guys, this is the end of the episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you're enjoying the channel, remember to subscribe, like, leave me a comment. Don't forget that notification bell. And um, you thought this was all over. No, this Jeff Maker's front locker isn't working. So I guess I'm gonna have to take a look at that before heading to Texas next week. So guys, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.